Praise God. You may be seated. God bless you. I have enjoyed the presence of God that I have felt here tonight. I appreciate the way you folks worship. And uh, uh, I, I'm just thrilled to be here. I really am. I mean that. It's not, oh, no, I've got to go to Oakley. No. I wanted to come to I didn't have to. But I'm here because I want to. And I'm here because your pastor will bug you till you do. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, I'm here tonight. And I'm glad to be here with you. And uh, this facility that you got here, it's nice, it's clean, it's right. It really is. And uh, so I'm just glad to be here. God bless Brother Connell and his wife and children and this congregation. I feel tonight a different spirit on me. I feel a teaching spirit tonight. And you got to go with what you feel. And uh, this is what I feel tonight. Now, don't fall out with me till I get through. And then don't fall out with me. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, I, I just feel a teaching spirit on me tonight. You know, I've got all kinds of speed. I've got red-faced, hurry up, ba ba boom, boom, ba ba boom. But I just don't feel that tonight. I, I feel a teaching spirit. Now, I want to say this, and this is what, don't fall out with me. Uh, what I'm going to teach tonight, it has nothing to do with Acts 2.38. It has nothing to do with the oneness of God. It has nothing to do with holiness within or holiness without or separation from the world. Now, you're getting scared already, aren't you? <laughs> Praise God. Just trust me. Just trust me. But it has uh, to do with something that, 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 that we have to put up with every day. And uh, see, let me tell you this. Now, you can start the clock because I'm already teaching. Uh, let me say this. We can repent and we can be baptized in Jesus' name and we can be filled with the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2.30. And that is a necessity. That's a must. That's a got to. You must be born again. Praise God. And we've got to have a revelation of the oneness of God. Jesus said, except you believe I'm here, you're going to die in your sins. The Bible does teach holiness within and it teaches holiness without. And it teaches separation from them. And those things that I just named is a must. It's a got to if we're going to be saved. But we can do all of that. But we still have to live in this life. And uh, this, I'll, I'll give you my subject later. But I'll tell you what we're going to deal with tonight. We're going to deal with life. Everybody say life. life. Everybody say life. In the morning, you're going to get up, and you're going to deal with life. In fact, church is going to be out after a while, and you're going to deal with life. And, and uh, I, I got this revelation some time back, way, way some time back. And in fact, the Lord willing, I'm putting together a little booklet, you might say, uh, uh, about life. It's not about the doctrine. It's not about whatever, whatever, whatever. It's about life because uh, I've noticed saints they can really live for God and be on fire for God and and have a revelation and just live right and separate just everything's right but but the thing they struggle with is life you got me the thing they struggle with is life one preacher told me he said brother Morton he, you know I'm glad I'm here tonight I feel good yeah. praise God now, the longest I've ever preached in my life was on a Sunday night in the church that I pastored for 41 and a half years. I preached three hours and ten minutes on a Sunday night. I feel like breaking that record tonight. <laughs> and some of you are thinking, man, I'm already dealing with life. <laughs> no, no. And, 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 uh, 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 but I, I, I noticed, I noticed saints and, and, uh, one preacher said to me, he said, Brother Morton, I don't struggle with Acts 2.38. He said, I don't struggle with that. He said, what I struggle with is life. 
Now, he didn't mean that he was tempted to backslide and lose out with God and want to go to the world. He wasn't saying that. It's just life, everyday life, life. And so that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Now, that's not my subject, but that's what we're going to deal with tonight. We're going to deal with life. And, uh, and, and, and just sit and listen to me, all right? In 2 Corinthians uh, 11 and 28, there's just a, be seated, just be seated. That's why I said just sit there and, and, and listen to me. Praise God. And in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28, there's a, a portion of Scripture there, just a portion. The Apostle Paul said, that which cometh up on me daily. And that's what we're going to deal with tonight. That which cometh up on us uh, daily. The old country philosopher said, the thing about life is it's so daily. Do you believe that? Yeah. The thing uh, about life is it's so daily. Let me tell you, life is like a grindstone. It will either grind us down or polish us up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the thing that, that we struggle with tonight is, is, is life, is life, is stuff. And I'll get into that tonight, and we'll get into that stuff tonight. One time there was a man that decided to walk. Now, let me tell you this. I've preached this message about uh, 150 times. I really have. And, and sometimes I go for a long time, and I don't preach it. I've got to feel it. And when, when, when we made the, the connection that we're going to come up here, I got the feeling this. So this makes me know that you folks need it. Yes, sir. Or somebody needs it. Yes, sir. Or maybe I need it. Maybe I'm preaching it to myself. But uh, there was a man that decided to walk from San Francisco to N New York. Uh, and and, and uh, so he, uh, let me tell you, you know this. It's a long ways from San Francisco to New York. Now, you can get on an airplane, be there about four and a half, five hours. Zoom, you're there. But if you are going to walk, you know, I just, I just, I, I just, I, I'm just not that motivated to want to do that. And, and so it was that, that he decided to do it, and he did it. And when uh, they found out that he did it and uh, that he was going to arrive in New York, uh, they interviewed him, and uh, they, they, they wanted to know some things. And uh, they said, was there times when you almost quit? He said, yeah, there was times when I almost quit. I almost gave it up. I said to myself, what in the world am I doing this for? But he accomplished it. He, he started it, and he, he finished it. And so it was, they asked him, said, all right, if there was times when you almost quit, what was it that, that caused you to, to want to turn around or to quit or to give up? They thought he would say something like this. It was the cold winter winds or the hot summer suns or the rivers I had to forge or the towns that I went through or uh, the deserts or the mountains I had to climb or, or, or whatever. He said, I'm going to tell you the thing that aggravated me the most. Do you know in life, there's things that can aggravate you. Yes, sir. Maybe y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But, but, you know, he said, I'm going to tell you the thing that aggravated me the most, the thing that bothered me the most. He said, I would get, I would get sand in my shoes. And, he, and they never expected him to say that. It wasn't the cold winter winds or the hot summer suns. It wasn't the cities I had to go through or the people I had to put up with or whatever, whatever. He said, I'm telling you, there was something. I, 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 I'd get sand in my shoes. And he said, it, it, you, know, you know, sand in your shoes. I remember when I was a kid uh, living in a sandy part of the San Joaquin Valley in West Texas before then, that, that I, I, I'd get sand in my shoes. And you have to stop every once in a while and pour the sand out of your shoe. You know, in life, you can get sand in your shoes. That's right. 
And eh, 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 uh, he said it was the sand in his shoes. And like the sand in the traveler's shoes, it's often the day-to-day problems that almost defeat us. It's the everyday grind. You getting me tonight? It's the day-to-day. Let me tell you something. Uh, You can lose out with God. You can backslide. You can fall from grace. The Bible teaches that. It's not once in grace, always in grace. Uh, as long as you stay there, it is. But, but you can fall from, from uh, a, a grace. And, and so it is that, that uh, uh, I don't believe a person just wakes up uh, one morning and says, You know what? I'm going to backslide today. I'm going to quit going to church. I'm going to live, uh, uh, quit living uh, uh, for God. No, let me tell you something. Uh, backsliding is a progress. It's a progress. And, and as a pastor for many years, I have sat on the platform and watched uh, folks, and, 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 and I've seen brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, and, and they're like an airplane, and they begin to lose altitude, and they're going down. And we could preach, we could teach, we could pray, we could do, we could counsel, but, but once they got that in their spirit, it just, it's just hard to get a hold of them. Once you fall off a ladder, it's hard to catch yourself. And, and so uh, backsliding, it's in the process of time. And, and let me tell you, let me tell you what, what gets you. It, it, it can be the everyday grind. It can be life. You know, just, it, it, just, it just begins to work on you. Uh, the Bible says, in your patience possess ye yeah. your soul. Yeah. It takes patience to live for God. Yeah. It takes patience to be saved. It takes patience uh, uh, to live uh, in uh, this life. Uh, uh, patience means enduring. Uh, it means continuance. Uh, it means uh, uh, it means bearing trials calmly, uh, uh, manifesting forbearance under a strain, uh, steadfast despite opposition and difficulty and adversity. Oh, oh, oh! I want us to be saved, and Calvary tells me that Jesus Christ wants us to be saved. And if we're going to be saved, we've got to learn to live. Uh, in this life. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17 said a friend, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. The Bible said we're born for adversity. Adversity. Do you know the word adversity in the original said it means uh, uh, tightness, tightness, tightness. Oh, let me tell you, in life you can get up tight. And if you're sitting there and saying, man, I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you're not a human being. <laughs> but if you're going to live in this life, there's going to be times when you're going to get up tight. Uh, uh, the word adversity means trouble. It means affliction. It means tribulation. It means distress. In this life, there's going to be stress and there's going to be distress. Oh, but I live for God. I'm so spiritual, I don't have that. You're nuts. You, no, I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how much you talk in tongues. I, I don't care how close you are to God. Look at the Apostle Paul and, and the man of God that he was. And look what he had to go through. But he said, I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in there with to be content. Uh, there's things uh, th- that's here to say. Let me, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, your water bill is to be paid. It's here to stay. Uh, your, your garbage bill. Maybe y'all don't do that up here, but we do in the valley. And, 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 and they're, just, they're just things uh, uh, that, that we've got to learn to put up with. There's no need dreading it. There's no need getting up tight about it. Uh, it, it, it there's just some things that's here to stay. You're going to have a flat tire. Man, I had a flat tire here about a month ago, the worst flat I ever had in my life or ever seen. Them. It was unbelievable. I ain't going to take time to tell uh, that story, but that, that's a story within itself. But it was just uh, uh, life. But I tell you, thank God. God sent an old sinner boy by to help me. I said, brother, I said, you're an answer to prayer. That's right. I tell you, life, 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 life. There's some things that's here to stay. There's some things that's aggravating you. You might as well just learn to adjust. Life is full of adjustments. And if you don't learn how to adjust, you're going to 
get out of adjustment. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, I, I remember when I was just a boy, and uh, we come out here from West Texas, and, and uh, we lived up in the Bay Area over in the San, out of San Jose out where the real poor folks lived. I mean poor folks lived. And uh, we had, uh, uh, we didn't have two rooms and a, and a bath. We had two rooms and a path. That means we had a, an outside toilet. We, uh, and had to take bath in a wash tub and what a way y'all don't know what a, anyway, anyway, I had a friend and I went over to my friend's house and, and I rode my bicycle over. I was about seven, eight years old. And, 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 and I rode my bicycle over there, and, and I forgot, I forgot, I, I forgot, I forgot that they had, they had some dogs. And uh, I run up in the yard, and there was this big old dog. I called it a chow dog. Man, it, it, it got up and went, and then I remembered they got a dog. <laughs> but that dog was on a chain, and and. And I, I, it's a wonder I had enough sense to think, but I thought he's on that chain. He can only go so far. And so I started backing up, and he started going, arr, arr. and I started backing up, and, and, and I thought I'll get to the end of that chain. When I get to the end of that chain, I can go, ha, 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 ha. But I forgot they had another dog on another chain, and this dog was backing me into that other dog. Yeah, that's right. I backed in. You ever been bit by a dog? I ain't telling you where he bit me, but <laughs> he bit me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. That's like life. Life can bite you. You hear me? Life can bite you. Life can get you down. Life can grind you down. You can come to the place where you say, oh, no, another day. You know, the Bible said man that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. That's what the Bible said. We're going to have trouble in, the, in this. Boy, I'm encouraging, aren't I? No? I, what I'm letting you know is that, that, that you're normal. You're all right. You're not the only one that goes through what you're going through. See, sometimes the devil gets to telling us that we're not normal, that we're not all, 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 all right. But uh, uh, a man that's born uh, a woman is, is a few days and full of trouble. Somebody quoted that. I don't know what translation that was, but they quoted that and said, man that's married to a woman is a few days and full of trouble. I mean, I'm just quoting what they said. I didn't say it was true. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let me tell you. I got some stories to tell you tonight. And that is this. There was a time in my life, in my life, in my life, there was a time when I, and I'm not even going to get into it. If I got into that and started telling that story, you'd be so discouraged that uh, we'd have to pipe sunshine to you, you'd be so low. But, 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 but there was a time in life when I was really going through it. Now, I'm not talking about having a flat tire or falling off the porch and hurting yourself or somebody getting mad. I mean, it was, it, it was, it was, it was a, it was a deal. It was a real wreck in life. And I've had to live with it for the rest of my life. And you've got to learn You've got to learn to go with the flow. You've got to learn to live with life. Praise God. And, and so anyway, I was really, really, really going through it. And I was just a young man. I was only 27 years old. And man, I'm 76. That's been a long time ago. But you've got to learn. You've got to learn to go with the flow. And, and, and you can't get li let life get you down. And you can't feel, oh, me, oh, my, me, myself, and I and feel sorry for me. No, 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 no. And so it, it was the, there was a preacher in the land in that day. And uh, his name was Brother I.H. Terry. And he started the church from scratch. In fact, he didn't even have scratch when he started. And, and that is in Bakersfield, California. And he built a a great church there at that time. He really, really, really did. Turned out many preachers and was strong in the doctrine and the faith and whatever, whatever. But boy, he was a different kind of a fella. 
he really, 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 really was. And, uh, and so this is what he said. And, and he, he was from West Texas, too. And, and he talked like, did you know Brother Terry? Did you ever meet Brother Terry? You met him once. You didn't forget it either, did you? No, you won't forget. Too bad you couldn't hung around him a little more. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so it was that Brother Terry told some preachers, he said, brethren, that's the way he talked, that southern talk. He said, brethren, he said, let me tell you something. He said, Brother Morton's a young man. And uh, he said, let me tell you, he's really going through it. And said, if, 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 if he's a good man, we need to help him. We need to help him. But if he's not, this is a good time to get rid of him. I mean, that's what he said. That's the way he was. But you can't kick success. But thank God he didn't get rid of me. But he decided to lend me a hand. He decided to help me. I was uh, preaching. Uh, I had pastored. Now I was back to evangelizing. And, and I was preaching. He, and he said, I want you to come and preach me a revival. And, and I'm telling you what. He brought me there to work on me. And he never finished his work. It was about 30-something years he worked on me all of the time. I saw him three days before he died. And I'll tell you about that somewhere in the story here tonight. And, 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 but he worked. He never let up on me. And I was determined, you know what? That man loves me. He's rough as a corn cob and tough. And boy, he, he wouldn't let up. And he'd work on me. But, but I thought, you know what? There's things uh, that he's trying to teach me that I need to learn. And I'm going to endure to the end. And I did. I did. I endured till he died. And finally, finally, I got relief. <laughs> now, I loved uh, Brother Terry. I, I, I loved Brother Terry. I remember I went there for revival. And, uh, and uh, oh, man, I, I, that was the beginning of my schooling. That was the beginning of my schooling. Uh, I, I, I remember one day we was... We was, we, now, listen, I'm going to tell some stories here to get to a point, okay? And we was driving. Uh, well, I tell you what we do every day. Every day nearly. He would go to the dump or he would go to St. Vincent de Paul's or he would go to the Salvation Army. And he would get stuff. They had a, 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 a store, their church did, and they would sell stuff. And he would go to the dump and dig around and find stuff and make money out of it for the church. And he would take me to the dump. I didn't want to go to the dump. I was in the dumps. I was going through it. And, 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 uh, and so we would go to the dump. He'd say, hey, pick that up, pick that up, put it in the pickup. Uh, yeah, pick that up, put it in the pickup. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but he was working on me. He knew what he was doing. Let me tell you, God ain't through with you yet. Yeah. God's, he'll work on you till, it's, till, till the end. And so it was, uh, and God was using him to work on uh, me. And so one day we were going along there, and, and, and he said, Brother Martin, have you got a pocket knife? Uh, I said, no, Brother Terry, I, I don't have a pocket knife. He looked at me, he was driving. He said, every man ought to have a pocket knife. Okay, <laughs> little old meek me, uh, I didn't have. So he took me over to a store, an old general store, and he went in there and he said, uh, he said, pick you out a pocket knife. He went back in the store. There wasn't nobody else in there. And the guy that was running the store, he said to me, he said, that preacher is hung up on pocket knives. Said he come in here one day and bought 40 pocket knives off of me. And so I picked me out a pocket knife because he said every man ought to have a pocket knife. Brother Connor, let me see your pocket knife. Have you got one? Boy, I, you feel real proud right now, don't you? <laughs> don't you feel proud? You know, I've been wanting one. Just, I've been wanting one just like this. I've been, boy, that's a, I like that. I collect pocket knives. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good, no, I'll let you. I'll let you keep I got one in my pocket. I got one in my pocket somewhere. I better have one in my Yeah, I got one in my pocket. I got a whole bunch of pocket knives at home. But anyway, 
anyway, uh, 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 and then let me tell you what I've done. Later, I lost that pocket knife. I lost it. And I went to Brother Terry. I said, Brother Terry, I mean, not, uh, it was some time later I lost it. But I saw him some morning. I said, Brother Terry, I lost that pocket knife. And uh, he, so he gave me another one. So I thought of something, because that, that's the way he'd do. So later, I went back to him again. I said, you know, Brother Terry, I lost that pocket knife you gave me. And he gave me another one. <laughs> but that's the way he would do it. And I did. I was talking about that first pocket knife. And, and I, I got more pocket knives off of him than fellas that was in his church. And they couldn't believe it. But that's the way he, and when he would come to preach for me, I'd hide stuff. Because if he wanted something, he'd just take it. <laughs> he'd just take it. Now, I'm going somewhere. Just, just, just stay with me. I remember one day he told me, he said, uh, he said, Brother Morton, there's three things that you need to work on in life. He said, life can be uncomfortable. He said, he said there's three things that you need to work on getting. He said, that's a good pair of shoes and a good car and a good bed. He said, because if you're not in one, you're in the other. Now, think about that. If you're not in your shoes, you're usually in the car. If you're not in the in your shoes and car, you're usually in the bed. He said, that's three things you need to work on is getting a good pair of shoes, good car, and a good bed. So you can work on that one. All right. And, uh, and uh, uh, one day we were out in his backyard. We were in his backyard. And, uh, and uh, uh, he said... Uh, he, he, he took me over to, he had some roses, he had some roses growing on a fence back there. That's where he used to live. And, and he went over there, and, 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 and I can't remember if he cut it off or had me cut it off. But I had a pocket knife then. And, and he cut off a rosebud. And uh, he said, Brother Morton, take that rosebud there. And he said, I want you to unfold that rosebud. He said, unfold it. I said to myself, I didn't say it to him, I can't unfold that rosebud. But he said, unfold it. So I started unfolding it. Well, you can't do it. I, I, and I stopped and I said, Brother Terry, I can't do it. I said, look, I, I've just got broken pieces. In my. He said, unfold that rosebud. So I, I, I folded, unfolded it. Till I had nothing but the broken pieces in my hand. He said, Brother Morton, he said, you're really going through it for a young man. And he said, I want to tell you something. He said, you're trying to force life. You're trying to work it out your way. You're trying to do it your way and your time and your will. And, and you're trying to open doors that God don't want open. And he said, you know what? When you come to the end of your life, you're not going to have anything left but just like broken pieces like you've got those broken pieces in your hands there he said that's all you're going to have and 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 your life's not going to amount uh, to nothing he said you're going to have to learn to relax he said now look he said uh, see uh, these roses here he said i could have uh, i could have come out here and 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 said i want roses today and he said i could have took those rose buds and I could have unfolded them and, or tried to unfold them. He said, I wouldn't have anything left but just broken pieces. I wouldn't have all these roses. But he said, you know, he, he said, God unfolded these roses. He said, a, a second, a minute, an hour, a day, a week at a time as it pleased him. And he said, it takes a lot to get a rose. It takes the water. It takes the hot summer suns. It takes the cold winter winds. It takes the, the pruning and the fertilizer and, 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 and all of that. But I could have said, no, 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 no. I want roses today. And he said, if I'd have tried to unfold them, I wouldn't have had anything left but just broken pieces. He said, Brother Morton, you've got to learn to relax and just let it unfold. He said, let God unfold your life a second, a minute, a day, an hour, a week at a time as it pleases 
uh, him. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Oh, let's lift our hands and worship God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's work. Come on. Let's worship God. Let's let this seek in here tonight. Let's let this seek in. Come on. Come on. Let God talk to you tonight. In Jesus' name, and come on, worship God. We're going to spend a few moments here praising the Lord. Let this spiritual lesson, uh, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, what you've got to do, He said, what you've got to do, God, uh, what you got to do, Brother Morton, is just learn to let it unfold. Just let it unfold. Would you say that with me? Just let it unfold. Say it again. 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 Just let it unfold. And I'm going to tell you what. God knows when and how. He really does. He really does. And you know that song that we sing, When God Unfolds the Roads, where that song came from. I was preaching a camp down in Louisiana, and I preached this one night, and there was a fellow who went home from church and wrote that song, When God Unfolds the Roads. That's where it came from, When God Unfolds the and, and you know, there, there, there's a lot of, lot of truth to this. It's only a tiny rosebud, a flower of God's design. But I cannot unfold the petals with these clumsy hands of mine. The secret of unfolding flowers is not known to such as I. The flower God opens so sweetly would in my hands fade and die. If I cannot, and I can't, if I cannot unfold a rosebud, this flower of God's design, then how can I think I have wisdom to unfold this life of mine? So I'll trust in him for his leading each moment of every day. And I'll look to him for his guidance each step of the pilgrim way. For the pathway that lies before me, my heavenly father knows. I'll trust him to unfold the moments just as he unfolds the rose. Let's worship the Lord again. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's worship the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Praise God. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Life used to really ride me. I mean, it wrote, it, let me, this is just a figure of speech. And that is, life come along when I was just a young man, just a young preacher, just a young pastor. Life come along, and life put a spit in my mouth. And life put a saddle on my back. And life climbed into the saddle with spur, boots and spurs on. And life said, get them up. And life. Have you ever felt like, you don't have to raise your hand, have you ever felt like life is riding you? I'm, I'm telling you, life, life, maybe, 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 maybe I'm preaching to myself tonight. Maybe y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. But life can ride you. Life can be stressful. Oh, yes, yes. And life used to ride me. And, oh, and, 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 but after Brother Terry taught me this lesson, after Brother Terry taught me, in fact, it was a, it, it, it dawned on me, but it really didn't really dawn on me till about two days later. And we was riding in his pickup, and it was cold. And I had on a black overcoat, I remember. And, and we were riding along, and, and I wanted to be at the church praying. I was going through it. And I said, Brother Terry, I'd rather be. He said, I know it. He said, but you're going with me. He said, hey, this is just the way it's unfolding today. You might as well just relax. And you know what? It dawned on me. There's no need of me getting uptight about this. I'm taken captive at his will. <laughs> 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 and, 
And I, I, but I, I am so glad that I, I submitted to the man of God. I am so glad. He, he, he helped me. He helped me. And, 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 and it really dawned on me. You know, this is just the way uh, it's, it's, it's unfolding. And, and so life used to ride me. And, and then what, when after I got the revelation, after Brother Terry taught me this revelation, you know what I did? I reached up and I jerked life off my back. Yes, oh, yeah. And, 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 and I took the saddle off my back and I put it on life's back. I took the bit out of my mouth and stuck it in life's mouth. I took the boots and the spurs and put them on. And I climbed in the saddle. And you know what? I'm in Oakley tonight. And you know what I'm doing? I'm riding life. Praise God. Woo, woo. And I'm going to tell you, it's more fun riding than it is being rode. I said it's more fun riding than it is being rode. It's more fun riding than it is being rode. Glory to God. Glory. Now, let me tell you, there's no perfect situation. But, it, but let me tell you, life can get a lot better. In fact, you know what? You need to go home tonight and paint you a sign that says, just let it unfold. And put it somewhere where you will read it and see it and remind you about just letting it unfold. Now, uh, where to put it? Uh, put it on the icebox. I know you'll be going there. Yeah. <laughs> You'll learn what that means. And, uh, uh, but anyway, anyway, in my house, I've got, I've got just let it unfold. In my little office, i got just let it unfold. It, because I have to be reminded, hey, sometimes I, I, I hey, I'll tell you. Then I think, no, wait, wait. We just got to let it unfold. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, there's things that's happened in my life. I cannot explain it. Bible said, Lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. What do you do? I, I, I can't explain. Well, Brother Morton, what about so-and-so? I, I don't know. The only answer I have, that's just the way it unfolded. That's just the way it unfolded. Uh, I, I, I tell you what, I've had things that I, it, that's happened to me in life that I don't have the answer to. And it looks like I will never have the answer to. And let me tell you, you've got things in your life and you'd like to have the, you may never get the answer to. But that's just the way it unfolded. You got me? That's just the way it unfolded. And so we have to learn to accept that. God's will, God's way, God's time. Boy, that's been a blessing to me. God's will, God's way, God's time. And so, uh, let me tell you, you'll never get this down perfect, but it can get, I, I haven't got it down perfect. I have to get a hold of myself every once in a while. Wait, 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 just let it unfold. Praise God. And, and, and uh, uh, sometimes it just unfolds quickly and beautifully. And sometimes you got to wait on it. You know what David said? David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, there is a difference in waiting and waiting patiently. Sometimes, what are you doing? I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. Just, and you're just walking the floor and uh, fretting and fuming and foaming at the mouth. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm, just, I'm just waiting on God. But that's not waiting patiently. That's right. Oh, David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he heard my cry. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So we've got to learn to wait patiently, patiently, patiently. Praise God. All right. Let me, Brother Terry, uh, one day, this is, this is after I, uh, I was pastoring in Fresno. I, I'd been there for a long time. Uh, we'd already built another building. I called Brother Terry one day. I said, Brother Terry, this is Brother Morton. Give me a word from God. And boy, he, he, he didn't even flinch. He didn't stutter. He didn't say, let me think. He just started speaking it out. I said, give me a word from God. 
He said, the longer you live, the bigger mess you're going to make. That was a word from God. Yeah. One day, I, another time, I called him, and I said, Brother Terry, I said, give me a word from God. And just like this, and boy, this has been a blessing to me. He said, one day at a time, brother, one day at a time. And let me tell you, there's a lot of truth in that. You, you, you know, yesterday's gone, and today's almost gone, and tomorrow we can do nothing about it because we're not there yet. We just learn to live one day at a time. God must want this church. I wonder who this is for tonight. If I knew who you were, I could really preach to you. We'd have a little Bible lesson on the side. No. But but uh, man that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Now, sometimes it unfolds quickly and easily and beautifully. And then sometimes you've got to wait on it. Man, the biggest decisions that I ever made in life was... Man, most of the time you, you, you just went through it before it, the answer come through. And, 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 but now, when I went to Fresno 40-something years ago, I went there in a revival just to preach a revival. I had no vision, no burden. I had a burden for revival and a vision for revival, but that's all. I went there and started a revival. Brother Lane, the pastor, said, do you mind if I'm gone a few days? Uh, I, I'm going to Texas. And what it was, there was a church in Texas. And Brother Lane had been there 19 and a half years and done a tremendous job. Tremendous. And 19 and a half years he had been there. He said, they asked me to consider taking a church in Texas. And so he went back there. He come back. He said, I feel like it's the will of God. He left and I stayed. It, it unfolded that quick and that easy. Sometimes it just happens quickly. And sometimes, it, and I had no dream or vision. Of, I didn't, I can't say that I had a burden for Fresno, California before I got there. And then, but he came home, he resigned, and they asked me to stay. And, and uh, I stayed 41 and a half years, and then it unfolded for me to leave. I'm gone. Man, it's. It's, 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 a, it's a good feeling. Praise God. I don't, I'm not here preaching tonight. If I was still pastoring, I probably wouldn't be here preaching. It's a good feeling to sing that song. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. No. <laughs> Praise God. No, I enjoyed it. God blessed us. God blessed us. It was good, and it was right, but it was time uh, for me uh, to, to leave. And so uh, there was a time, uh, there was a time uh, we were out in the uh, backyard again. And, and, and Brother Terry, he would start something and, and, and sometime and walk off and leave you. He was different, man. I mean, he was different. He was different. And, 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 and so we was out in the backyard and he said, Brother Morton. See that, see that gate? Yeah. He said it takes a long time to get a gate, and he walked on. I looked at that gate, and I said, I don't even want that gate. <laughs> it was an old gate. And there was a time when he said, see that fence? He said, it takes a long time to get a fence. Okay. And then there was another day when he said, uh, See that cement driveway? Yeah. Takes a long time to get a cement driveway. Uh-huh. And one day we were sitting in the house, and he, and he was sitting across from me, and, and he was, had his head down rubbing his bald head, and I had my head. We just sitting there. He said, Brother Morton, see that carpet on that floor? I knew the answer by then. Yeah, I know it takes a long time to get carpet on the floor. Of course, I didn't say it. He said it takes a long time to get carpet on the floor. And he began to explain it. He said it takes a long time to get a gate. He said, 
I started, uh, I, 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 I started this church. At that time, it was 25 years before. And he said, and look how God has blessed me. And boy, God did bless him. He said, look at these saints and these buildings and these buses. And, and he said, but a young man can come along and say, I want this right now. He said, it takes a long time to build a church. It takes a long time to get a gate. It takes a long time to get a cement driveway. It takes a long time to get carpet up carpet on the floor he said then he explained it he said but I have young couples in this church and 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 he said they want carpet on the floor right now and they want a gate right now and they want a cement driveway right now and they want a fence right now and he said you know what they do they go out and get two jobs they go in debt uh they work their finger to the bone and when the bible said seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Just live for God and do what's right. And the present duty is the will of God. Whatever needs to be done in that day, do it. The present duty is the will of God. Some folks are always looking way off out there somewhere. Oh, I'm going to do the will of God. And they never get it done because the will of God is right under their nose. What is the will of God? Uh, what is the will of God? Hey, you come here and the bathroom needs to be clean. That's the will of God. That's the present duty. Whatever needs to be done, it needs to be. I came in here tonight and, and, and Sister was, uh, 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 Sister Connell Jr. Was, uh, was vacuuming the floor. That's the will of God. That was the present duty. That need to be done. Do you get what I'm talking about? But, but some folks want it now. I want it now. I want a cement driveway now. I want carpet on the floor now. I want a gate now. It takes a long time to get a gate. Let's raise our hands and worship the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord now. Let's let this sink in. Come on. Let's let this sink in. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, let's let this sink in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, oh, glory to God, glory to God. Praise God. Things just don't happen to the children of God. They're part of a wonderful plan. The troubles, the reverses, the sorrows, the rod are strokes of the master's hand. When some dreaded accident strikes you a blow and you restlessly fret and demand, why try so hard the mystery to know? It's not just an accident. It's part of the master's plan. For all things work together for good to them that love God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Ah, Thank you, Jesus. Our life is like an unpainted picture. You know, sometimes you can uh, go to San Francisco or someplace and see an artist drawing a picture or painting a picture, I guess you should say, and, and, and it just looks blah. But when you come back and see the finished product, it, it, it can be beautiful. Some things we don't understand. Wait until the picture is finished. God's not through with us yet. It's here a little, there a little, a dab there, a dab. But God can make something beautiful out of our life if we're willing to just let it unfold. Does this make sense? Oh, yeah. Remember, this is only part of your life. It's not our whole life. Life is what happens to us when we've made other plans. I'm telling you, life Life, 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 life. Life can be uh, something else. It, it really can. Then I remember one day Brother Terry uh, uh, talked to me about money. He was really good with money. He said, Brother Morton, when you get, get money, he said, give God his part. And then he said, and then save some. And he said, eat some. What he meant is buy groceries with some. Don't eat the money. 
And then he said, and give some away. Be a conduit that God can flow through, that God can give through. If you eat it all, he said, you're a glutton. If you give it all away, you're a fool. If you keep it all, you're an old miser. And I, now, that, I just gave you a lesson in how to handle money, and you missed it. It's just that simple. It don't take no big, long uh, lesson. It's just, it's just that simple. And, and I practiced, I practiced uh, what Brother Terry said. Let me show you how different he is. One time I took a young couple with me. I was going someplace and going through Bakersfield, and I called Brother Terry. Before you go see him, I'd always call him. I'd say, Brother Terry, I'm going through Bakersfield today. I'd like to stop and see you. He said, yeah, come on by. I said, I'll be there about so-and-so time. And uh, so we got there, and I had this young couple from the church with me, and we went in, and I introduced them, and we sat down, and we started. He said, now, young lady, he looked at her. He said, right over there, you see that candy? He said, that's a box of candy. He said, when that clock strikes, I forget what it was, 10 o'clock, I'll say. When that clock strikes 10, he said, you get up and you go get that candy and you pass it out. He said, my mama taught me that after you have dessert, it's time to leave. And so it's exactly, <laughs> that's the way he was. And, and that clock struck, whatever it did. And, and she just got up and walked over there and opened that box of candy, took him some, us some. We ate some candy, and we got up and we left. That was his way of telling us when that clock, it's time to leave. He said, my mama taught me when after you have dessert, it's time to leave. But that's the kind of person he was. But he was full of, uh, of uh, wisdom. He, he re there, man, there's all kinds of things that I could, that I could teach you. Uh, all kinds of things that he taught me. I ain't got time uh, to teach it all. I ain't got time to teach it all. And uh, uh, let me read this to you. I found this one day. said, hey, by the way, that, that, that little reading I read to you about just let it unfold, that was after Brother Terry taught me the just let it unfold lesson. I was preaching a home mission revival in Orange Cove, California. When Brother Gentles was there, and and they just starting that church, and it was in a it was in a converted house, and I was sleeping in the basement, and they were living in the house out back, and 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 I was praying one day in the church, and I was walking, I was walking, I was walking and praying, and and there was a little church uh, a handbill or whatever you want to call it uh, announcement deal, and it was laying there, and I just praying and I looked and I looked and said just let it unfold and I got and that's where I got that uh, that little reading the author is unknown unknown just let it unfold it's only a tiny rosebud a flower of God's design and that's where I got that that's the way that unfolded and I read this one day a little girl eagerly and curiously picked several rosebuds from her mother's garden and tore them open to make them bloom but her eagerness turned to disappointment when the flowers failed to respond to her efforts. Her mother explained that God has a time for the roses to bloom, and they would have bloomed perfectly had she left them alone. How like some of us, weary with waiting, weary with waiting, weary with waiting for God, we tear at the wrappings of tomorrow and sometimes spoil what would have bloomed naturally had we only been willing to wait. So I say, wait on the Lord. I remember one time uh, we, moved to, uh, we, we moved to Modesto, uh, California, and I was in junior high school. And, uh, man, I'd never lived in a town before. Uh, I was 13 years old before we ever really lived in a real town. And I lived in the country nearly all of my life with hogs and dogs and, and cows and cotton and tractors. And, and how in the world did I ever turn out to be a preacher? I don't know. God, I, I wasn't born in 
I, 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 man, I don't want to be going too long here tonight, but I want to finish this. I, I wasn't born in, uh, uh, I wasn't born and raised in Pentecost. I didn't know anything about it. And, uh, and we moved to California. Anyway, we ended up Modesto, and uh, that's where the truth came to me. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for the truth. And, 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 uh, uh, and, and how in the world is, boy, it's something how my life has unfolded. God had to move us to California so I could find God or God could find me. I don't know if God can find you in West Texas, but anyway. Uh, anyway, I was, uh, I, I went to this new school, boy, that was something, and there were several of us, it, it was the beginning of a school year, and they marched several of us boys down to the boys' gym, set us down on a bench, and, and, uh, we were sitting on that bench, we was new boys, and he's going to put us in a room, or whatever they's going to do, and, and I remember a man, I still remember his name, Mr. McGuire was his name, and, and, uh, he come out and he had a, he had a referee shirt on, striped shirt. And he come out and he said, boys, let me tell you something. He said, you just wait right here on this bench. He said, uh, and, and learn this, boys. He said, there's going to be a lot of waiting in life. You might as well get used to it. I didn't know what he was talking about, but I found out there is a lot of waiting in life. There's probably some of you here tonight. There's probably some of you here tonight, and you're waiting for something. Waiting, waiting. And, you, and it may unfold tomorrow. It may never unfold. But don't lose your faith in God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. And just let it unfold. Let's lift our hands and worship God. Oh, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I read this in the, re in the Reader's Digest, and it fits here. It's called The Way of Acceptance. Teenage, a teenage son went blind. The father of the son said, It seems to me that we have three choices. Because people was asking him, How can you bear this? He said, It seems to me that my wife and I have and I have three choices. We can curse life for doing this to us. And let me tell you, every one of us will have an experience that we can curse life for doing it to us. And, and, and we can look for some way to express our grief and rage. Or we can grit our teeth and just endure and get bitter. Or the third alternative is, or we can just accept it. The first alternative is useless the second is exhausting the third is the only way just accept it and then say that's just the way it unfolded for every you see uh, uh, the, the solution to our most difficult problems often lies simply in facing things as they are and adding Six words, that's just the way it unfolded. For every problem under the sun, there is a solution, or there is none. If there is one, try to find it. If there is none, never mind it. Just let it unfold. Now, now, now this can make your life better. But remember this, you will never be perfect. It will never be perfect. But you can work at it. Then Brother Terry taught me this one day. Oh, my. Oh, my. He called me up. I was passionate in Fresno. He said, Brother Morton, he said, I want to tell you something. I said, yes, Brother Terry. Uh, he said, I heard some men talking the other day, and they was talking about you. And he said, I want to tell you something. Everybody don't like you. Okay. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, everybody don't like you. He said, so I'm going to read you something and tell you something, how to handle people that don't like you. It's like this, and he read it to me. He drew a circle that shut me out. He called me a heretic, a rebel, a thing to flounder. But love 
and I had a wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. He said, Brother Morton, he said, I want you to go through life drawing big circles. He said, when men shut you out, he said, you love them and you just draw a bigger circle that takes them in. And if they draw a circle and shut you out, he said, you just go through life drawing big circles. Pray. Don't that make sense? And everybody in here has got somebody that you need to draw a circle around. That maybe they have drew a circle and shut you out. But you just draw a big circle. Love and I had a wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. Praise God. Praise God. And everybody said praise the Lord. Well, I'm heading for a close here. Everybody say, just let it unfold. Man, I got more notes than, than whatever. I have never put this message together. I just write it on pieces of paper, and I don't do anything else this way. And I'm looking for something right now. I'm not through yet, but I'm almost through. And some of you are saying, boy, I'm telling you, I'm ready for it to unfold. <laughs> but... Don't get uptight. This is just the way it's unfolding. Relax. Praise God. Takes a long time to get a gate. Takes a long time for Brother Morton to get through sometime. Here it is. Praise God. All right. Let me tell you this. Three days before Brother Terry died, I went to see him. Three days. Three days before he died. And when I got there, he was sitting in a big chair in a in the living room in the corner. And, and, and he was very much alert and awake. Boy, his mind, unbelievable. His mind was so sharp. And, and, and we talked, and, and he'd talk a while, and then he would quote this scripture. He'd talk, and, he, and he'd, he'd say, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then he'd talk a while. And then he'd say, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what he was doing? He knew he was dying. He was getting ready, uh, he was getting ready to die. Now, for 30-something years, he worked on me. Who did he work on me? Listen, oh, I could tell you, man, he, he thumped me. He got me, but I said, I'm going. But he was, he was, he loved me. But that day, that day, thank God, he finally prayed through, and he was so nice to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is what he said that touched my heart three days before he died. He said, Brother Morton, and he started crying. He said, just think about it. He said, here I am, a little old man in a little old house in a big old city. And God revealed this truth to me. Oh, saints, we, we need to thank God for this truth. Yeah. Little old man in a little old house in a big old city. And God revealed this truth. Let's thank the Lord for this truth. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord God Almighty, everlasting Father. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. It's only a tiny rosebud, a flower of God's design. But I cannot unfold the petals with these clumsy hands of mine. And now I think about a, another incident. I just thought of this. One, this was many years ago when Brother Terry, and they were in the old, old church. And, and, and there was a pastor out behind the church and, 
he had a horse out there, and they had a uh, uh, an old fashioned bathtub for a uh, for a watering trough. And Brother Terry and I walked around the corner one day, and the the watering trough was running over, and there was water all over the ground. And he looked. He said, Brother Morton, somebody turned the water on and they didn't turn it off. He said, that's so ignorant. He said, now, I know who done it. And he said, if I go find them, I'm going to ruin their day. I'm going to ruin their day. And when I ruin their day, it'll ruin my day. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to turn the water off. He said, why should I be upset over water spilt on the ground when the whole world lies in wickedness and needs God? And here I'm all upset over just water spilt on the ground. And you know what? In life, we can just be upset over just water spilt. It don't mount to a hill of beans, as Mama would say. You get me? Yeah. It's only a tiny rosebud, a flower of God's design. The secret of unfolding flowers is not known to such as I. The flower God opens so sweetly within my hands fade and die. If I cannot, and I can't, unfold a rosebud, this flower of God's design, then how can I think I have wisdom to unfold this life of mine? So I'll trust in him for his leading each moment of every day. I'll look to him for his guidance each step of the pilgrim way, for the pathway that lies before me, my heavenly Father knows. I'll trust him to unfold the moments just as he unfolds the rose. Praise God. And then the song says, when God unfolds the rose. You want to come, sister? She's going to help me. I talked to her before church. I started to call and, and talk to her before I ever got here. And I thought, no, she can do it. Do you believe she can do it? We're going to put her on. Let me see your pocket knife. You don't have a pocket knife? You got a pocket knife? Where's it at? You don't know? Let me see if I got a pocket knife. You ain't got a pocket knife like that. I'll give you that. She's helping me. The, the, the labor is worthy of its hire. Oh, yeah. The song says when God unfolds the rose, he always gets it right. When the petals are in place, it's a beautiful sight. God knows when to hold on and the perfect time to let go. So let him have his way and let God unfold the rose. Praise God. Praise God. Can you sing that? Let's worship the Lord as she sings.
worship God and sing it with us, you know. learning to trust God. You know, faith and trust are very, very close. But trust is, trust is something that develops after you have lived for God for a while. And you learn that he is trustworthy. And he will not leave us or forsake us. And he's as close as the mention of his name. Peter said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But he said, before he said, as though some strange things happened, he said, which is to try you. Think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try you. Which is to try you. We may not understand everything. The Bible says that uh, we see through a glass darkly. Uh, the word there is, is actually, it means an enigma. It's a puzzle that we don't understand why it is that we may be going through what we're going through. But God understands. The Bible says, Philippians, it says, be careful for nothing. One translation says, be anxious for nothing. Oh, bless you. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When you don't understand, can you pray with thanksgiving? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's an old song that says, when you don't understand his hand, trust his heart. All things do work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. I just believe the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. He loves you. It's not just a children's song. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. That's a truth we need to get. Praise the Lord. He does love us. Amen. Thank you, Elder Morton. Thank you, Elder Morton. You know, there are people right here tonight, and you know who you are, that you needed that tonight. Am I right? I know I'm right. Praise the Lord. God's got tomorrow in his hand, and it's all okay. You don't need to worry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's reach out to the Lord and let's just worship Him. And let's thank Him tonight. Let's thank Him, can we? Let's thank the Lord. Thank you. I love you, Sam. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know that you hold tomorrow. I know that you hold tomorrow. God, I give you praise. I give you glory to you Savior. I love you, Savior. Praise the Lord. Let's be mindful uh, of our schedule. Let's be praying. Let's be witnessing. Let's uh, be inviting folks to the house of God. Let's be talking to folks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
look for open doors. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You can uh, shake at least 500 hands before you leave today. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Make sure you come greet Elder Morton. Amen. Thank him for being with us tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. By the way, there's, for young people in the back, if you'd like some ice cream over here in the back, there's some leftover from camping. Praise God.